Well, it's time for wiring. I've got my wiring loom from the Mustang GT donor car. Am I in over my head? Well, you're just going to have to stick around and find out. So we're finally at the point where I've got the wiring here and I'm hoping to basically utilize most of the functions of the donor car. The thing about it is we're probably going to have to do some alterations to the wiring. I know for sure that if I do want to keep the fuse box at the front, and I haven't entirely decided that I, that I do want to, is that we're probably going to need to lengthen this part of the harness. So originally on the Mustang, this is where it goes through the firewall. and. This part here then goes into a second fuse box uh, just on the on the right hand side kick panel and also it, it also plugs up into the dashboard. So uh, it's going to be a matter of sort of working it out and one other thing that I was thinking of on uh, Mustangs obviously it has a battery over on the left hand side. I, I want to keep the engine bay as clean as possible so I'm looking at alternatives and right now I'm thinking about putting the battery in the boot. But probably if I do that, then what we'll need to do is we'll need to um, organize a breaker switch. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Breaker switch? Isolator. Isolator? Um, no, not isolator. Anyway, we'll come back to that. <laughs> I'll look it up and I'll write it right here. Anyway, so that, those are thoughts. Those are some of the thoughts that I've got going on. Uh, but I think the first thing, first things first to kick things off, I think what I'm going to do is going to uh, remove the front stone tray and remove both front guards and that way we're going to have a lot better access. So that's what we'll jump into. All right, so with the guards off, obviously that gives us much better access and we can sort of see what some of the possibilities are. If I was to have the fuse box somewhere up the front here, we could possibly run the wiring around here. Um, actually, sorry, probably have to run the wiring up through here somewhere. I don't know, there. We could probably run it up through there. It would come out inside this cavity here and this, this here is the original Falcon uh, torque box and then that in there is the Mustang GD donor car's firewall. So it would come out through here and then would have to go through that hole there and that is, if I get the wiring harness, that particular grommet thing there is what fits through the firewall. But it's that section there which is just not, not long enough to be able to come from there, go up and through and over to here. So that's why would, that, that particular part would need extending. So we're gonna be looking into that. And then the other thing would be, as I mentioned before, that if we put the battery in the boot, we would have to run a battery cable from that fuse box. Uh, I don't know if we'd have to, we probably wouldn't go through the same route. We'd probably come around the side of this um, support frame down here, and then I'd probably run it, probably put a hole through here with a grommet run it through there. At this stage, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking of possibly running it along here. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I think my idea of putting the fuse box at the front is not going to be pretty. There's not enough room to hide it in the wheel well, which would probably be a very bad idea anyway. If I do put it in the engine bay, it's basically going to be sticking right out here. I don't like that idea. My next idea is, can I put the fuse box in the boot? If I could manage it, the final outcome would be a lot better. The engine bay would be cleaner, and since I'm already relocating the battery to the to the boot area. I think it would be a great idea if I can pull it off. And I wanted to try to see if I can do this myself without involving auto electricians. However, I'm not guaranteeing that at this stage. So if all else fails, then I'll probably call in some help. Having said all of that, I think I might mock it up and just get an idea of what's what and what has to stay, what has to go. If I was to move the fuse box to the trunk boot, I'm getting confused now. Put this on a little bit of time lapse. I'll lay it out on the table and see what comes up. Well, it all makes sense now. Well, not really. So getting the harness unwrapped doesn't quite solve everything, but it helps me just understand a little bit more about the harness. And I think moving the fuse box to the boot is a possibility. So, got my fingers crossed. Anyway, let's just have a look at it. It's pretty confusing like that. So I think what I might do is lay it out on the floor and try to sort of explain a little bit about what I'm thinking. I hope this makes sense, but there's a good chance it won't because I'll probably get confused trying to explain it myself. So this is the engine bay wiring harness pretty much as it stands, although it looks messy because I've untaped it. Here is the swiz, swiz, here is this, here is the fuse box. And then the wiring travels back to a grommet which goes through the firewall and then we come out the other side where we see these plugs and these plugs would be I think hooking into the fuse box which is mounted on the kick panel which is over here. So that's what you would see mounted on the driver's side kick panel if you took it off. So they plug into that and then you've got things like this which come off on the engine bay side which is that would be the ABS unit, the wiper unit, etc. You've got your engine management system here, which uh, normally would be mounted just below the fuse box inside the engine bay on the right hand side. So your engine harness plug, which is this one here, would plug into this here. And then another plug, which is on the uh, wiring harness, would also plug into that. So that is all forward of the fuse box. The problem is all these wires. If I want to put this fuse box up there in the boot of the car, I keep getting confused with boot and trunk now. I'm an Aussie, with, well kind of an Aussie, we'll put, we'll just call it a boot. So if I jump into this, there's probably no turning back. Maybe I should just order a spare wire. <laughs> all right guys, I thought about it for 30 seconds and I've decided I'm going to dive right in. I'm going to start chopping into this loom. Yeah. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Well, that's it. As they say, no turning back now. So there it is. Got my fuse box and basically all I need is about, I don't know, four meters of each one of those single wires to run all the way from the back of the car up and joining this lot here. And so then there'll be all of these wires here would have to run through this grommet. I've decided that I'll leave the, um, I think it's an ECU. I'm going to leave that up front in the engine bay just for convenience. It'll just mean, it'll just be these two plugs here. On to the next stage. All right, the good news is, managed to get some wire to extend this loom. Bad news is, it doesn't have any traces on it. Couldn't get wire with traces. So uh, I figured it's, it's going to do the job, but the problem is if there's any issues later on. So, well, am I in over my head? Probably, but 
I've been in over my head ever since I started this project, so what the heck, you know? Anyway, as I mentioned, I was, wasn't able to actually get, you know, wires with traces, so I've just basically got the majority of the correct colours but without traces. What that means is I've got to be able to distinguish them somehow, so what I've ended up doing is just using a labelling machine, I've just, uh, you know, gone ahead and labelled at each termination point what it is. So I've got BL means blue with, say, a white tracer, that same wire uh, will be labelled with that BLW and then up here where it was originally cut in the loom I put the same label there again. I've got more than enough wire but I thought because you know I'm not really going to know exactly how much I need until I run it through the car I'll just overestimate. Yeah, onwards. <laughs> A lot of wires but you know it's time intensive but it's really not that hard it's just logic so anyway we'll carry on. So we've finally got all our wires in place and um, I've definitely overestimated the length that I need which I thought better to be on the safe side. There's a lot of it though, that's a hell of a lot of wires. Anyway, like I said, I'm probably a metre or more too long but um, we'll get it in the car first. As you can see we've labelled all the ends to match up with the fuse box. Going to get it all, try the different routes you know. Um, at this stage I'm not 100% sure which direction I want to take these wires so at least having more length than we, can, than we need means that we can sort of just uh, play around do a bit of experimentation. Uh, the other thing was uh, I have to, even though I'm going to hook this thing up to the fuse box and hopefully get the car running and, and, and everything else, before panel and paint everything has to come out. So that means that every single wire that's con connected to the fuse box is going to be disconnected. And originally I was going to be soldering them together. And then I thought, well why don't I just play around with some plugs. So I had a look, had, had a talk to the guys down at Van Line and they showed me these DT plugs. So I got, I just got a couple of them to experiment with and you know it comes with a crimping tool and everything. So that's what I've got to do. I'm just going to experiment with one of the sh one of the small looms. Green under there. Oh, I see. This thing holds this. This thing locks the seal in place. See, you push that in. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now I got it. I was thinking to myself, can't be that crappy, can it? <laughs> All right. And then I'm just going to heat shrink that. Okay. All right. cool down a little bit but yeah that's click and we're in eh? and then out beautiful so that means no no that's really good I think this is a far better option it also means that if for whatever reason you need to pull the loom out of the car you just have to unplug these and I mean like apart from the trial assembly part at you know later stage in its life, if you ever need to pull the loom out, you can without having to chop wires. So yeah, really like the DT connectors. Bring it on. How many have I got? Hang on. <laughs> I think it was like 81 wires or something. Okay, onwards and upwards. So now the harness is extended, I can go ahead and start threading it through the car. 
Now that I've got this wiring run through, and I don't really know what the final location of it's going to be, uh, so what I'll probably do is I'm going to go ahead and put, there's a soundproofing panel that goes along the firewall, and then there's the second fuse box which goes against that kick panel. It also runs back uh, to the rear of the car, things like tail lights, fuel pumps, and all that sort of stuff. And then it also curls around to the left and goes to another computer module. So I'm going to go ahead and put that all of that stuff in and see how this wiring harness plays with all of that. One thing that I was surprised about though was the length of this wiring. I actually, we measured them out to roughly seven meters. What we've got left is one of them is basically the right length. The other one is probably, you could say maybe half a meter too long and maybe Maybe this one, maybe a metre at most, because you don't want them to be too tight also, you want to be able to sort of have a little bit of room to move. So that's pretty good. Obviously gone ahead and put this uh, heat shrink sock on, I really like these, it sort of um, feels really thick, it's kind of like a canvasy type material, so I think it's really good for protecting the wires. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll throw that, uh, that panel and that's it there. So now with the soundproofing in, I've got the second computer module on the passenger side floor, started the pedal assembly and I've got the uh, second part of the harness which runs down the passenger side of the car loosely in place. So I'm going to go ahead, put the air conditioner in and then figure out the best path to run this harness so that it's out of the way and it's not going to rub or chafe or anything like that. So now I have the path of the loom worked out, I can start feeding it down the left hand side of the car. Now I can't leave all the plugs on, I've left a few of the small ones on, but it doesn't really matter because the beauty of these Deutsch plugs or DD plugs is that they're really not that hard to disassemble and put back on again later. So I just need to finish off some of the uh, Deutsch plugs for this uh, fuse box and also the end of the driver's side loom and then she's ready to start plugging in. So with the wiring loom finally extended and all of the Deutsch plugs in place, I'm able to go ahead and plug this fuse box in. Well that is the major part of the wiring loom extension done and I've got to tell you, 
It was fun, but labour intensive. It took quite a while. I'm not sure exactly how long, but quite a few hours. Anyway, we'll have a quick look at it. So as you can see, the fuse box is connected to the rest of the wiring loom with these Deutsch plugs. And the beauty of that is that um, we're able to disconnect the wiring loom from the fuse box uh, to be able to pull the loom back out if we need to. Well, we will need to for the uh, for body and paint. But anyway, so this, uh, the way I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking I'll probably mount this fuse box on some type of bracket so that it's up underneath the quarter panel there and then obviously that will be covered by a panel which I will have right around the interior part of the boot so it'll all be hidden away and then what I'm looking at also is one of those uh, it's like a lithium style racing battery which they're lightweight they're a lot smaller hopefully I'll be able to fit one in just underneath the fuse box if not I'll put it on the on the driver's side but the beauty of them is they're quite light they're only about five kilo inside the car I've got the wiring loom uh, path pretty much worked out. It runs underneath the air conditioner. It's not been squashed in any way. It still has movement. Uh, runs up through the passenger side there. I've still got to work out where it goes through the kick panel. Probably have to make something a little bit more substantial in terms of rubber bushing or, or padding or whatever at the moment. I've just got some inner tube around it so it doesn't chafe against any metal. So it's the same on the driver's side. This one's just above where the fuse box is. Just got it running down through this this rebate and that's pretty much where the original wiring ran through but this one obviously has to come up for a slightly different route there so it's all looking fairly good up until we get to that stage and that's all got to be worked out later so that's things like tail lights the wiring for like brake sensors the fuel system and i think part of the wiring loom for that may also go to safety management yeah, which and there's some sort of little unit which bolts on there to cover airbags and seat belts and stuff like that up front here I've still got to uh, put in the uh, ABS unit so we'll do that in a little bit this part here we've uh, got the ECU I think it is and that's where I'm thinking of mounting it so that it's out of sight and then I'll probably at this stage maybe look at making uh, some sort of box for it to fit into just for a bit of extra protection so the way these things work, the wiring has to go across the front of the car, back down to a cavity on the left, and in inside the cabin plugs into the uh, dashboard and the, uh, the other computer unit. So I followed the same path up through the inner guard. I did have to lengthen it. So that all tucks up under there. And then this little panel here comes down, fits into place and covers it all up. So all, all in all, it's some pretty major progress on the loom. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and install the dashboard, get that all plugged up and just make sure that, again, our wiring loom is following the right path. So the best way for me to get this dash in since I'm on my own and it is quite heavy is to use the engine hoist and it's just a matter of getting it in through the gap and then just using the hoist to either come up or down to allow the boom arm to fit in underneath the roof line so it's going to be done in two stages so first of all I've got to get it inside the car and then we'll disconnect it we'll swap positions and we'll put the boom arm through the actual windscreen opening There's no doubt this would have been a lot easier if I'd had a couple of extra set of hands, but you know, you do what you have to do with what you've got.
So how this dash is attached is a locating uh, dowel on the left hand side of the dashboard which locks it into a bracket and on the right hand side a pin which goes through a hole so it's just two bolts on either side of the dashboard through the A-pillar, couple through the plenum back into the dash and that's pretty much it. One thing I was really pleased about was I was able to design and fabricate this whole modification so that the actual dashboard didn't need to be cut. So it actually fits in behind the Falcon windscreen quite nicely. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it. When I come back onto this car, I'm going to be making a bracket to mount the fuse box inside the boot area. And I'm also going to be making another bracket for the ECU, which is going to be mounted on the back of the radiator support inside the driver's side front guard. Uh, if that makes any sense, yeah. So anyway, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.